Dr. Joel Marciano, uh, Director General with the Philippine Space Agency. Thank you very much for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Welcome to Singapore for GSTC. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I saw your panel yesterday uh, with the ASEAN region. Well, thank you, Chris. Uh, thank you, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I did live in Australia for four years. And I, did, I did my PhD there. But now, yeah, I am the, the currently well, the first and the current director general of the Philippine Space Agency. We call oh. it Filsa. Yes, Filsa. Um, and so it was established five years ago, right. uh, August 8, 2019, via uh, national law, yes. the Philippine Space Act. And uh, the first thing it did was establish the Philippine Space Policy, and then therefore also the Philippine Space Agency. Very much the same age as the Australian Space Agency. Uh, yeah. Where, did, where did you study yeah. in Australia? Adam? In Sydney, in, ah, Sydney, nice. in New good. South Wales. Yeah, yeah the, the Australian Space Agency, I think, was in 2018. Yes, you know, I think so it form, formed officially yeah. into 2019, but just right. after the last right. IAC in Sydney. Yeah. Are you going to come down to IAC in Sydney? I hope so. I look Wonderful. forward to it. It's in the neighbourhood, so it's accessible, convenient. Yeah, looking forward to it. Well, as it happens, yeah. uh, APR SAF was just held in Perth uh, yeah. in November alongside our conference yeah. IPSEC. And uh, you'll be hosting uh, that this year as well, right? Yeah, in November in Cebu. Yeah. Right? So the, the month after, after IAC. IAC. So uh, looking forward to a large Australian uh, delegation to APR South in Cebu. Absolutely, right. 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 Um, maybe mm -hmm. uh, you've got eight satellites up that uh, mm -hmm. the country is managing. Uh, maybe introduce us to the agency. Uh, you mentioned the policy. You've got a regulatory environment as well? Well, um, it's not a regulatory agency. It's more of a promotion yes. uh, agency. At the same time, oh, it implements the National Space Program. Yes. Um, uh, in, in the Philippines, uh, there's still a lot of heavy lifting as far as space is concerned. And if you look at the national policy, we talk about key development areas for space to address. That's national security and development, hazard management and climate studies, R&D, education and awareness, international cooperation, and space industry capacity building. Yeah. So I think in Australia, you have a space uh, office, a space agency that orchestrates an ecosystem. In the Philippines, we try to do that, but at the same time, there's also parts of the ecosystem that are still being built yes. You know, in the universities and in industry in particular. So that's a major focus for us, is building strength in this ecosystem across the, the, this so-called value chain and the components of that value chain that would generate the socioeconomic benefits of space uh, at the end. Yeah. Where do you see your key partners, uh, both in Southeast Asia but also internationally, uh, yeah. your outreach that you do uh, with the Philippines? You know, when, when other countries heard about the Philippines having a space agency, it was, it was, very, it was very good, you know, because they, they told us, oh, congratulations, how can we help you? Yeah. And so we've been engaging them ever since, uh, at least, uh, on a bilateral level and also, we, well, maybe I should highlight one particular uh, initiative with the European Space Agency. Yes. This is on the Copernicus program. Um, so there, the Philippines has uh, received a grant from the European Union to build up uh, infrastructure and services out of Copernicus data. This is the open uh, Earth observation data from the Sentinel satellites. Yeah. You know, of, of the European Space Agency. So a mirror site, a Copernicus mirror site is uh, being set up in the Philippines hosted by FILSA. So this will address the national scope and it will have, uh, it will deliver pilot services on land uh, cover mapping and forest mapping. This benthic habitat mapping, that's corals and seagrasses and also on uh, ground deformation and uh -huh. ground movement. So these pilot services uh, matter to the Philippines, but also to many parts of the region. Yes. So we expect this also to become uh, more regional in scope and promoting the use of open data and data sharing and also to some extent sharing expertise. Well, we saw here in Singapore they've started an Earth Observation Initiative. I think for Southeast Asia that's uh, a very relevant uh, aspect, particularly with the Philippines given uh, the structure, you know, sort of the, the island aspect of it as well. Uh, and also ESA have just signed a letter of intent in, here in Singapore. How, how advanced do you see sort of Singapore as a, as a hub uh, in comparison to, to the Philippines? Do you have a letter of intent, say, with ESA, or is that potentially on the cards? And things like Earth Observation Initiatives, is that something you would like to be a part of or start uh, in your own country? Well, there's plenty of room for synergy here. Yeah. I think different countries are realising the, the value of Earth observation, uh, including here in Singapore. So we hope to connect with all of these initiatives in, in the region. Yeah. Um, if you look at the Philippines, you know, there's a big motivation for the space agency is really what we are and where we are. Yeah. You know, we're an archipelagic maritime nation 
and we need to bridge these islands and the vantage point of space addresses that. One of the yeah. quick interesting points that came out of the yesterday's mm. session was working together as Southeast Asian mm. nations rather than the ASEAN aspect. Uh, mm. Maybe an update on uh, where space is within ASEAN. Mm -hmm. Does ASEAN have a space policy or are countries almost do it their own way at the moment and, and collaborating together sort of more inform yeah. uh, less formally uh, in, in that regards? I think it's the latter at the yeah. moment, the, the current situation, although space is being discussed on a, on a regional forum through the uh, committee on Science and Technology Innovation under ASEAN. This Got is it. a subcommittee yes. on space applications. Yes. Got it. Yeah, um, I think, but still, you know, if you look around the countries in this part of the world, not every country has a space office or a space agency, yeah. but it doesn't mean that space is not relevant to them. Yeah. So I think having a venue where we can discuss this more openly and how to move forward and even bringing the right people to the, to the table. Um, Science and space science and technology and its applications are very important, but we also have to start looking at space governance and policy and how to contribute to the sustainability of outer space activities. I think the voice of Southeast Asia is, is formidable. I think it's substantive and it needs to be heard as well. Do you have a call to action, uh, maybe even from our Australian audience and regional audience uh, and internationally, of course? Um, people reach out yeah. to you? Is there anything that you're interested in particular, whether it's research or skill uplift or, yeah, what would be of interest to you if you had a call to action? Well, the, the Philippines is a very young population. There's a lot of um, young people eager to try new things and space is one of these frontiers. You know, of course, we're not just talking about astronauts and rockets anymore. We're yeah. talking about artificial intelligence and processing satellite imagery and adding value to this data and making sure the data uh, gets in the hands of people who can make the right decisions and can turn them into action. So I think that's a call to action for our young people and the Philippine Space Agency is trying its very best to make sure that we we um, promote the data generators, the people who process the data and the people who act on the data so we bridge them together. So uh, really the, the, end of the, day, the call to action is collaboration. Yeah. Um, for a young agency like the Philippine Space Agency, we have been growing now. We, I was employee number one and one employee <laughs> for five months, but then now we're 240 people. Beautiful. And it's 20, uh, average age is 27 years old. And the message we bring to everybody that we meet is we have to collaborate because then that's how progress is made um, in, in this regard. You know? So space is something that we see might be quite distant still for many people but it impacts our daily lives and you know what all of us all countries we are neighbors in space we share a border there so well particularly in this region i'm glad i didn't i wasn't aware that you'd studied in uh, in sydney so already i'm glad we had that uh, that connection with you already yeah. but dr joel marciano director general of the philippine yeah. space agency thank you very much for joining us on australia and space tv and enjoy the rest of the gstce yeah. here in singapore right thank you chris